Let's talk about the dark web. That was a little bit spooky, wasn't it? Today, we're gonna to clear up the difference between the deep web and the dark web. But before we get into the weeds of the deep versus dark web and I show you how all that works, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Flare. Now, Flare isn't just some random company. People like me, cyber threat intelligence professionals, need to have the right tools for the job in order to effectively monitor the deep and dark web. It isn't easy, as you're about to see later in this video, but that's exactly what Flare does, because it enables you to see your attack surface and deny attackers the intelligence advantage. And it can do this because it's actively monitoring the internet, not just the deep and dark web, but also the open web, the clear web. If someone in your company posts API keys into a GitHub repository, ding ding, alert in Flare. If an employee's leaked credentials get put on a paste site, ding ding, alert in Flare. And it's instant, it's really fast. I've got alerts set up to email and to Slack, but it works with other collaboration tools as well. And it's super easy to integrate into your existing security stack. In about 30 minutes, I was up and running. It monitors things like ransomware leak sites, which you'll get to see later on in this video. Thousands of Telegram channels were bad actors sell data to other bad actors dark web, cybercrime forums, and so much more. But the thing that I love the most, honestly, is their AI functionality. And I know that's easy to say, but it is really cool because not only does it translate from languages like Russian into English, it also gives you context around what it is you're seeing. You don't actually have to read the logs per se. It will use AI to analyze what it's seeing on those posts and you just read the paragraph of text, it is super easy to understand what the alert means, even in foreign languages. It's really cool. There's a link below that helps support the channel if you go and check out Flare. Well, thank you, Flare, for sponsoring this video. Let's go explore the deep and dark web. The deep web is all of the web pages that aren't indexed by search engines. Google, for example. Google's little bot crawls around the internet, scanning websites left, right, and center. But some sites don't get scanned by search engines like Google. And that's because web developers put something called the robots.txt file in there. Let me show you what it looks like. So here I am, I'm on linkedin.com slash robots.txt. You can see that at the top. You can see here, it has this thing called the user agent. And this one is looking for something called the LinkedIn bot. The user agent usually is like the web browser you're using, but in this case, they're identifying other companies' bots that are scraping the internet. So basically what this means is, if you're the LinkedIn bot, you're allowed to scrape all of LinkedIn. But if you are the Google bot, guess who owns that? You aren't allowed to scan ad contacts, and that means linkedin.com slash ad contacts. That's what it means. You're not allowed to scan address book, export, Ambry, analytics, answers, auth wall, badges, all these things, you're just not allowed to scan them. If we scroll down the page, you can see Applebot. Let's go further. Bingbot, MSNbot, etc. So large parts of LinkedIn aren't visible to Google, Bing, etc. This big search engines, which means large parts of LinkedIn are on the deep web. Easy, simple as that. So I hope that demonstrates how normal websites form part of the deep web, even my website. If we go to garyrudell.com robots.txt, you can see I do have a robots.txt file. However, it just lets everything scan my website because I want it to be found by all the search engines. So that's how it works on a website level. But you may be thinking about something else. What if you have a private profile? Let's say you've got a fully private lockdown LinkedIn profile. Technically, that is part of the deep web because it isn't publicly accessible. There's access controls around who gets to see that. Obviously, the company can see it, so Instagram can probably see your private profile, but the vast majority of the internet can't. And we would have to know each other and you would have to accept my request for me to see your material. So that's technically part of the deep web as well. The dark web is a subset of the deep web because it too isn't scanned by bots and search engines and the like. And it's also very hard to find because the dark web, you have to access it via Tor. You can't just fire up Safari or Chrome and access it. So let's have a look at the dark web. Here I am, I'm inside the Tor browser. That's what this little purple logo means. And the problem is, I have no idea where to go. 
because dark web websites end in dot onion. But if I type in facebook.com, I need to change the dot com to dot onion. But that won't work because that isn't a valid address for Facebook on the dark web. Yes, they do have a dark web service. So let me just grab the full link. Here we go. There it is. Catchy, huh? This is technically called a hidden service. When you make your own dark web website, you can just fire it up on a little Raspberry Pi and turn it on as and when you please, get an address for it, and then people can access it for that time period and then you disconnect it. But they have to know that big, long string of text right there. It's not indexable. There's no search engine for the dark web. You can't just go on here and try and Google your way around to find stuff. You kind of have to spend time on the normal internet looking up lists of dark web onion addresses, which is how I found Facebooks. There's the CIA. I have a, a video where I explore some of these, but it's not easy to find. And that makes it hard to monitor. I'm not really sure about the ethics of showing you the actual URL for this website, so I'm gonna blur it out. But if you Google it, you will find it. I take no responsibility if you go here and something bad happens to your computer, okay? So this is the website for Lockbit. They're a ransomware as a service group. You rent their ransomware from them and they get a cut and all this sort of stuff. And we'll get into that in another video. You can see here they've got affiliate rules that the affiliates, the people that actually do the attacks, have to abide by. And here you go. The oldest international ransomware Lockbit affiliate program welcomes you. We are located in the Netherlands, completely apolitical and only interested in money. Feel free to pause this, by the way, and have a read at what some of this stuff says. It's, um, it's very, very interesting, to say the least. There you go. You've seen all of it. You can pause it. And if we go back to their homepage, I don't want to name and shame any companies, but on the page here, the black text that you can probably just see through my blurring at the top of each box, that is the URL of the victim. And there's four along the top and then three down. So there's 12 here that I can see. I don't recognize any of these names. And then underneath that, you can see big red bars on these three. That's because there's a countdown happening on those ones. But there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of companies that have been hit with Lockbit ransomware. They've had data stolen and then leaked on the dark web for anybody to come and download. And there's a lot of names on this list that you would recognize if I were to start reading them out. Go on Google, type in Lockbit victims, see for yourself. So in summary, the deep web is everything that isn't indexed by search engines and is password protected and has privacy settings turned on. The dark web is a subset of that, and you can only access the dark web via the Tor browser. And you gotta know the URLs that you're gonna visit, otherwise you're just gonna be sat staring at an empty Tor browser. So that's it. If you've got a better way of explaining it to people, please do feel free to leave a comment below. I will give thumbs up and love hearts to everyone making great suggestions, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna go back on the uh, dark web.